Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re -up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Main Just caught a touchdown from the Bay Kidnapped, murdered, and buried in a backyard, federal agents and police made the gruesome discovery back in December, charging retired Briarcliff Manor police officer Nick Tartaglione with a laundry list of charges, including murder. Today, a new twist. The FBI arrested his alleged partner in crime, Joseph Biggs. He's a school security guard here in Hastings on Hudson. Biggs and Tartaglione are accused of plotting to distribute 11 pounds of cocaine and lured four men to a bar in Chester, New York, where they were shot dead, then buried. Police officers shot and killed himself outside of school this morning as the FBI stopped him in his car. And as CBS 2's Ali Bauman reports from Haverstraw, investigators are checking possible connections to a quadruple murder in Orange County. The FBI says when agents pulled over a car on Rossman Road near Langshire Court this morning in the town of Haverstraw, 8.20 a.m., the driver pulled out a firearm and killed himself with a shot to the head. What followed was hours of heavy FBI and state police presence blocking the residential street off and concerning neighbors. I really didn't know what's going on. Sources tell CBS2 the driver, Haverstraw police officer Gerard Benderoth, was being investigated in connection with former Briarcliff Manor police officer Nicholas Tartaglione, arrested in December in the murder of four Orange County men who disappeared months before. It is believed at least one of those victims was involved in drug trafficking. Here on the quiet streets of Haverstraw, residents are shocked by the connection, remembering Benderoth as having a warm heart. Always had his kids with him. You know, just seemed like a regular, you know, nice guy. It was pleasant to us. You know, just a regular guy. In addition to his career as an officer, Benderoth was also a strongman competitor, a Rockland County native and known figure in the community. His weightlifting photos hang in his regular deli. The FBI and state police say they are still actively investigating. We tried going to the Bender Roth's family home. They declined to comment. In Haverstraw, New York, Allie Bauman, CBS These 2 News. These four Middletown, Orange County, New York men disappeared without a trace eight months ago. Now the U.S. Attorney's Office says the men were killed. And the person responsible is this man, Nick Tartaglione, a retired officer from the Briarcliff Manor Police Department. Now under arrest. I was appalled. I, I couldn't believe it. Village of Chester, New York Police Chief Peter Graziano says his detectives had been working hard to bring the victim's family's closure and was stunned to hear a former police officer was accused of murder and selling cocaine. On April 11th, surveillance video shows the victims exiting their car outside a Chester diner in the same plaza as Liquid Lounge owned by Tartaglione's brother. The U.S. attorney alleges the former officer murdered the men inside the bar. We're not sure if they were working for him or trafficking for him or, or in some way involved in the illegal drug business with him. Today, investigators were executing search warrants of the bar and Otisville, New York farmland leased by Tartaglione and used by victim Martin Luna to raise pigs, according to police. Investigators digging on the property recovered four bodies yet to be identified. Do we take an oath? You know, and it's it's just it's despicable to do something like this. You know that, that whether you, whether you stay on the job or whether you're not on the job, you know you have values, you have ethics, and and they stray from that, and and things go bad. Authorities won't say who or what led them to suspect Tartaglione in this case. It's believed at least one of the victims was involved in the drug trafficking, but the U.S. Attorney's Office says the rest of them were in the wrong place at the wrong time. In Chester, New York, Hazel Sanchez, CBS 2 I don't know News. what investigators are looking at. I do know what happened, and I don't think that there's any hint that anybody assaulted Mr. Epstein. Bruce Barquette is speaking out to ABC News about reports accused pedophile Jeffrey Epstein may have been assaulted in prison. There was no assault on Mr. Epstein. There's no hint of an assault on Mr. Epstein. Barquette is an attorney in New York. He represents a man named Nick Tartaglione, a former police officer now accused of killing four people in a drug dispute. 
Tartaglione is in the same New York jail as Epstein and in the same housing unit. ABC News has confirmed Epstein was found unresponsive in his cell with marks on his neck. Investigators are trying to figure out what happened, and part of that is talking to Nick Tartaglione. Nick was spoken to by prison officials about the incident, but saying he was questioned about it kind of implies that they're investigating him, which is not true. Yo, we back. It's your boy Poplot. Some wild shit going on around here. We on our way to NY with it. White Plains. I bet y'all thought we was headed to the city. Now, today, we are going to be covering the story of a guy by the name of Nicholas Tartaglione, which just kind of sounds like some shit out of Carlito's way to me. And if you remember that Ernie Kleinfeld shit, this is something like it. Now, according to the federal government, it is alleged that from at least in or about June 2015, up until including April 2016, Nikki T, along with his associate, a guy by the name of Joseph Biggs, and others conspired to sell five kilograms or more of cocaine. Now, in April of 2016, Nick Tartaglione, along with Joseph Biggs, participated in the killing of Martin Luna, Urbano Santiago, Miguel Luna, and Hector Gutierrez. The federal government would go on to allege that that was done for the furtherance of their drug distribution conspiracy. And it would be on April 11th of 2016, where they would allege that Tartaglione, along with Biggs, would lure the four to a bar by the name of the Liquid Lounge in Chester, New York, that was owned by Tartaglione's brother under false pretenses. It would be at that location where the federal government would say that the foursome would be held and killed. Going on to say that three of the victims, Urbano Santiago, Miguel Luna, and Hector Gutierrez, were simply accompanying Martin Luna. Now, I'm not quite sure what made this a federal case, but with them on the job, they essentially cracked the case in about six months. And Nick Tartaglione and Joseph Biggs wasn't the only two people that they was looking for. Three months after Nikki T was arrested, the FBI would attempt to pull over a car in March of 2017 in Rockland County at around 8.20 a.m. Now inside that car, another former NYPD police officer, 48-year-old Gerald Benderoff, who had been nicknamed White Rhino from his days as a strongman competitor. Before authorities could take Benderoff into custody, he would essentially shoot himself in the head in the driver's seat of his car in broad daylight. Now, while fighting this federal quadruple murder case, Nikki T would find himself in some whole other mess when he would end up being housed with probably the most famous pedophile definitely of this century, a guy by the name of Jeffrey Epstein, who was charged with a slew of crimes, a lot of them against underage victims. One day, authorities would find Jeffrey Epstein in a fetal position in his cell with injuries to his neck. During the course of my research, I saw reports online where Jeffrey Epstein reportedly told his lawyers that he was attacked by Nicholas Tartaglione. I also saw reports where Nicholas Tartaglione was questioned about this alleged assault on Jeffrey Epstein, but that would all kind of die down or add more questions, depending on who you are. On August 10th, 2019, where guards will go to distribute breakfast at 6.30 a.m. and they will find Jeffrey Epstein unresponsive in his cell. The day after his body was found, on August 11th, they would perform an autopsy and they would determine that Jeffrey Epstein had hung himself with a sheet from his bed. But on August 14th, an unofficial source would report that broken bones were found in Jeffrey Epstein's neck, saying, although this can occur in suicide of the elderly, according to forensic experts and most studies, these bones are broken more common in victims of homicide by strangulation leading to a lot of questions about that. Now, if Nikki T didn't have enough problems with the case and that, he would find out earlier this year in 2002 
that the federal government will be seeking the federal death penalty against him for the quadruple homicide. So this is just a crazy, crazy case. But y'all know I'm going to bring them to you. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red subscribe right under this video so y'all know when this real trail spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box below. Let me know where we need to go, what we missed, what we got wrong, and all of that. And I'm going to be back ASAP with some more shit. Y'all know how we run it. It's your boy Popular. Mob.